This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get techy, get geeky. It is the Awesome Cast episode 434. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, with us, first of all, in studio, in a different seat than he normally is, he, he's, he's presiding over the uh, Mayhem Mania for the podcast later over there. Uh, but also, uh, it, on Gold, we talked about how he fixed his uh, Surface Pro and his experience with uh, Microsoft there. So please, uh, Patreons, we'll get we'll touch base on that. How are you and Chilla, John Chilla, join us? Happy to be here. Nice to have working equipment. Yeah, it's, it's great. Key, it's, key, it's key when you're. You're not going to just get up and walk away in the middle of the show like you yeah. did last week. I, I, yeah, it, it's perfect. As yeah. another notch in your gadget guru over a big bank international Esquire. Yes, yes very yes. much so. And we have with us uh, a couple newbies to the show. Uh, with us, first of all, Kit Mueller is with us. Hey, everybody. Hello. And uh, as I get my titles right, and also uh, Mitch Turk is with us as well. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Everybody's got their on-brand coffee mugs. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys are with Startup Boost Pittsburgh, which we'll talk about here in a, in a moment here. Uh, good to see some uh, uh, cool new programs uh, come into the area, and uh, good, to, good to have you on. Um, and I know, and Kit, I don't think, Kit, you've, you've been on the show remotely before, remotely, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, never in, in, in this awesome studio. Another in this awesome studio. <laughs> I don't think we had the awesome studio when you were on before. So, uh, but welcome back to the show and welcome to the first timer. Anyways, go check out everything at awesomecast.com uh, where you can find um, links to subscribe to the show and so much more. Uh, hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast and hit up the awesomecast Facebook page where you can join us every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Facebook Live and other streaming platforms on the Sorgatron Media social media. But if you are seeing us any of those other places, you can uh, you can drop into the Facebook because that is the chat that we do pay attention to during the live show, including my mom is in there and and seeing Missy's head in the back video, uh, things like that. Things that you don't see if you're on the audio podcast, of course. Also, thanks to our streaming partners at the Rivers Edge PGH.com that carry us every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time and our friends on the West Coast at the 405 Media.com uh, that carry us at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. Uh, weekdays, five days a week. So go check that out. Follow them. A lot of great content. Some of our other content is over there too. Um, and if you are interested in advertising with the show, or if you want to be part of our studio audience while we record, uh, hit up producer Missy over there to awesomecast at Sorgatron media.com thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club five dollar level matt weller and john diggy de gore as well as at the fan of the show dollar level longtime supporter michael fedor uh you guys are going to get a uh, special gold video where we find out how chilla uh got his surface back uh after last week's interesting um debacle <laughs> If they During still had the groove, show. you could have said I got my groove back too. But How Chilla got groove. his groove back? They don't they have don't, groove. They don't have the groove. Service that groove, anymore. groove was their their like Microsoft Music, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah thank, thank, <laughs> good thing that's not around anymore. <laughs> did you listen to it on your Zoom? Was that what we did? <laughs> yes, that's back exactly. in the day. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, it is time for our awesome thing of the week, Chilla. Uh, you got you got your awesome thing up here. I'm I'm a I'm a little lonely in the list, but yeah, that's okay. We so, <laughs> we just didn't, I didn't put mine in there yet. <laughs> so, um, Mobile World Congress is this week. It takes place in Barcelona every year, mm -hmm. and it's where all the mobile technology companies come together. You got your Samsungs, your Huawei's, your Microsofts. Um, so this is usually the week of mobile tech and technology that supports. The mobile or, enterprise or just small small tech sometimes yes. right it's not just cell phones yes this this story that i picked is my awesome thing of the week is there is going to be a new micro sd format that offers 
like 985 megabytes per second transfer rate, which is pretty much faster than a lot of the older generation SSDs and on par with, with any of those. Because of the faster transfer speed, it will off also consume less energy, which for our mobile devices, everyone loves. I have a feeling between the slow access speed and battery consumption, this is why we've also seen um, external memory disappear out of phones, even like the Google Pixel. Um, those types of devices have, have left even putting a card slot in them. Mm -hmm. um, I like the card slot for things like my Samsung device and using the the VR with it. I can put all those videos and content on the, the uh, micro SD card. Um, but this is going to hopefully change that game and allow us to bring those back to the devices. Not to mention the fact that think of how many micro SD cards it takes to, to take up the same amount of space as an SSD drive, even the small stick type, the, the match or the gum stick type drives, mm -hmm. being able to carry a wallet of these around and just throw video on them, pull one out, move on to the next video. If you're editing, doing anything like that, I, to me, think this is a major win to the industry. I'm sure price will be expensive. They didn't announce any prices on it. The price will come down over time, just like with every other SSD mm. card. And then also I saw announced, I didn't see if these fall in the realm, but they've announced, they've started to announce the first terabyte. Um, I don't know if it's SD or micro SD, but they're starting to, to announce the first terabyte. Jeez. SD cards. So, so. And, and, and I wonder if it would be supported by the devices that I have. Like even like the GoPros seem to top out at 632. Uh, the older ones that older I, ones. I've had on hand. Yeah. I, I think you'll see where some top out and I think you'll see where some are upgradable. I've seen where certain devices firmware upgrade will get you um, the ability to use a larger card. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why it's if the if the vendor's mindful the technology is going to expand faster than the longevity of their device um especially at gopro those things are indestructible what you ran over one with a car did someone hit like the at baja oh Didn't someone um are you, are you talking about when i lost my gopro and it got like like uh, uh watered down like for the rest of the endurance race because i couldn't go to oh, safely I, I thought go it got look for it blown no off no, no 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 it was it was the gopro i didn't have the back on it to protect it and um, it, it got run over. I had it on the side of the track. The cars came by, these mini Baja cars, and and ran it over, churned it up in the dirt, and threw it somewhere. And I'm like, well, that's where a car went off track. I'm not going to go looking for my camera in all this stuff. So I had to wait the rest of the four hours of the race to go find it and found it right there in the weeds. Uh, and then I have about an hour and a half video of somebody just like it get hit. You, you see bugs crawling across it and then just like the guy that was watering the dirt track like you just get you're just getting watered on every so often so and it's still it was, working right? it, it works i still use it yeah. other than the battery just you know just the the irreplaceable battery kind of going on it it still works i still have the card somewhere in circulation um it's fine i mean i think i want to buy new cards for for this season just to have like fresh mm -hmm. hardware or something but um no it's it's pretty incredible what how those things do um, other than them receiving like a shock or something like a static shock, like they're pretty, they, they can go through a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's why you throw them in stuff like GoPros and, uh, drones and things like that. Right. So yeah, I, I think I have the GoPro, I have like one gen back mm -hmm. and it's no problems and I'm still getting firmware updates. So nice. occasionally I update the app on my phone and then it pushes. Oh, firmware. I had like, I had like the cheapest, like no name GoPro uh you know they had like the, the the case was like built into it and everything like it doesn't have a screen no no that was why it doesn't have a screen it's just a small block yeah yeah and that's what i'm kind of looking for one of maybe those sessions or something mm -hmm. i can just throw in the corner of, of, a, of a tent and just like do a time lapse or something like that so i want to get that in my that little grip gear track uh get get the replacement part for that so i can do some more cool shots this season get, cool. gear enough for it next next week's arrow design oh wow so Anyways, uh, so my awesome thing, um, a little. <laughs> so I, I was editing my uh, uh, podcast for actually. Speaking of auto drive, uh, we're going to be going up there 
Uh, it's a General Motors uh, backed event uh, coming up in Michigan in a couple months. And uh, we did a little Meet the Mentors podcast that'll be coming out here as soon as it gets approved, probably within the next week or so. And uh, it was pretty cool when we got to a point where we were kind of, and these are like guys that are like engineers working with General Motors and uh, saying, hey, what's a, you know, what's a project that like, what's an exciting project that you're working on, you know, that you're allowed to talk about, of course, right? And uh, it was cool to go down the line. One guy was actually uh, involved with the launch of the Chevy Volt and the Bolt, the electric car. Oh, wow. Um, another guy was involved with Cadillac's, let me get the name right, Super Cruise. That's a, a part of their Cadillac um, line. It, it's, uh, it's a level two and level three um, automation that I think they're going to roll out widely in 2020 from an article I was seeing. So this seems like relatively equivalent to what you see in um, Tesla's. Um, what do they call their auto drive over there that got them in trouble? I, I don't know what the I don't know what the name of it is. The autopilot, yeah, the autopilot pilot mode. So, it, it, which actually, this is probably technically because that's what probably a level two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this is kind of their thing uh, for General Motors, and I, you know, we hear every once in a while, but you forget about everybody is working on this stuff. Obviously, there's a big competition that GM is uh, supporting that goes along with this, right? Um, and they're you know looking for that that, that the next talent um, that they they do with this competition. And just just to roll back, what Auto Drive is? Auto Drive is a uh, three year comp. I love the guy like crossing his arms as he's <laughs> driving along there. Um, you know, Auto Drive is a is a, a you know an AI car competition where um, you know the kids do like three years of this, um, and uh, they're trying to achieve level four status. So, like, this goes right at GM. They get a uh, Chevy Bolt. So, they're given the car. Whereas the other competitions they work with, they're building the car or the plane or something. Like, they're given the car, and then they're given assets through, like, Intel and other partners to, like, build, you know, interface with the LiDAR, deal with the AI technology, and kind of build that out. So, it's going to be the most exciting five miles per hour event that I'm going <laughs> to film this right. year. So, looking forward to that here uh, coming up probably, I think, it's the beginning of June. Um, but, uh, but no, just kind of cool to see the kind of projects that these guys are working on that we're talking with. Here's another one. And, uh, Missy, producer Missy had actually, uh, was aware of this as well. This is an invisible, um, tow behind from GMC that's going to be, uh, coming out. I think it was like their Sierra cars or uh, trucks, I believe. Uh, so it, it kind of, it, it kind of cloaks in your rear view what's behind your trailer. So if you're, you're pulling a, uh, a, uh, Tra uh, trailer or a camper or something um you know it 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 takes care of that for you um some really cool so do they i'm guessing they mount a camera on the back of the trailer and then it overlays the it's video gonna feed into yeah it overlays the video feed like over your um over your trailer view that's cool so so, and this is going to be in the 2020 Sierra. So again, stuff that's like kind of on the, well, I guess that'd be coming out this year for the most part for 2020 is like mm -hmm. later this year. Um, so it, it's always cool to just kind of see like what cool people uh, we end up talking to on some of these podcasts. You know, this is after last year when I started talking with literal rocket scientists with, uh, with um, um, Lockheed Martin <laughs> so or SpaceX or, or whatever we have over the last few is I'm sure I'll have plenty to talk about as we go through and I start uh, meeting these people to the competitions uh, starting this month uh, as well. So, all right, uh, let's touch with you guys. So you guys' awesome thing is what uh, you guys are involved with, uh, uh, guys. So so tell us about Startup Boost. Well, so uh, we're both here, and I appreciate you uh, inviting us and, and taking notice um, for Startup Boost. Uh, it's a global pre-accelerator program uh, that we're helping bring to Pittsburgh. Uh, the hope is that we're going to... Um, help accelerate uh, the trajectory of early stage entrepreneurs into national accelerators, uh, if that is the, the right for their business and life situations. Um, maybe uh, garner investment, again, if that's fits what their, what their uh, business is doing uh, and the time <clears throat> that they're in, or uh, simply getting faster to revenue um, as a viable outcome. So uh, we do that through a six week sprint uh, where we uh, bring in um, other founder slash operator mentors, um, a whole new diverse uh, set of new faces and names um, to provide uh, network context and some connections to resources. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I think you said it well, Kit. The only thing I'll add, I guess, is just, you know, it's pretty obvious, thanks to anyone who uses the internet, that uh, barriers to entry for all kinds of products and companies are ever decreasing. So it's, uh, you know, it's really about opening up and diversifying the early stage of the talent pool and the mentor pool and the, the whole ecosystem in general. Um, in, in pretty much, you know, a consistent fashion is doing that repeatedly over and over. So, mm -hmm. you know, when we started, there was no, there was no accelerator programs. Now there are accelerator programs. Now we have pre accelerators and beyond that, there will be something else. Right. Um, but as things get easier to undertake and, uh, more and more people start to participate in the programs, they need some of the structure and the, as Kit mentioned, the network, mm -hmm. um, that a lot of, especially underserved, uh, communities don't have, uh, which are really kind of, uh, accelerants to success in these in these realms so give me an idea you know i'm familiar with the alpha labs and the startup weekends and kind of the different levels of, of um aspiring entrepreneurs or or you know startups or you know i have an idea of what do i do next with this kind exactly. of stuff right yeah. like like which you know what level of people in the startup realm are you are are is this kind of a fit for well i mean i think you you gave the great the greatest context you could so um what is it? Eight years ago, I helped bring Startup Weekend here, mm -hmm. sort of as a tool in the community building efforts. Um, and at the end of that, you know, you, you win this competition, and you're sort of like, now what? You you you're like, just you're 54 hours beyond idea. It's not really a thing yet. Mm -hmm. um, we we want to help the companies that are like just beyond that inflection point, where you're a real thing, you're in market, but you're pre like material revenue or investment. Mm -hmm. um, there's that really you know like. Uh, vulnerable point in uh, company creation and, and adoption and, and, and bringing to market where either, you know, especially if you're, if you're, if you're coming out of, if you're starting a company and you're leaving um, a corporation to do this, uh, you're coming off a of campus, you're new to town, or this is like a new uh, field for you, a new sector. Um, you know, you don't know sort of where the, the ground is, is sturdy and what's your true North um, who are the right people. What, you know, even the words, um, you know, how do, how do I do my pitch correctly? Um, and then access to uh, customers and investors is, is paramount. So the hope is to provide network around that um, with a bunch of people that are uh, building it or have recently built it that can speak from experience, can answer, um, you know, can provide advice in the format of um, when I did this or something like that happened to me, I did this, mm -hmm. you know, um, and we're doing that. Uh, it, it kicks off on April 2nd. Um, right now we have an application uh, session that's open till March 15th. So open applications. We'll select the cohort between the 15th and April 2nd, and we'll host it for every Tuesday night uh, for six weeks. Okay. And how many are you looking to uh, bring in? Uh, we're looking for about six to eight teams, optimally. Okay. Uh, team, kind of a loose loose term for mm -hmm. you know a founder, a co-founder team. Um, but we're flexible. So, and just to add on to what Kit mentioned there about the program being part-time, after hours, uh, you know, that really does lend itself to the niche that we're fitting into. Because if, if someone's in an accelerator at this point, or they've, they've taken serious investment, six figure, seven figure investment, then they're in their groove. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is what they do for a living at this juncture in time. Yeah, a lot of the folks who are going to be good fits for startup boost are kind of in a, a funk and not sure where their fit might be. They may still be it to, to kids point, they may still be at a corporate gig. They may still be going to school. They're not sure, should I finish, get my degree, this, that, the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, we're a good fit for those folks. And I think that's where a lot of the, the benefit is served. And that's also part of why the program is successful, because it is part time and it is after hours. Mm -hmm. um, so that you don't have to tick that box that most uh, accelerators would be looking for to say, you know, can you do this full time? Can you give up on all your other stuff? So, so. How far I mean, from a typical group entering into this, how many people are past ideation and into proof of concept or past proof of concept and have a somewhat polished product? That's a great question. So, so, uh, we are probably not polished yet. Okay. You're beyond idea. It's a thing. You're, okay. It's a yeah. Thing. Um, you've gone out and talked to people and asked if your thesis is correct and you've began to build some service or, or product around that. Mm -hmm. Um, you're, you're still early. You're still in the customer discovery phase. There's no product market fit. Um, and so the, the, uh, this initial spring cohort is meant to um, a uh, match you with some mentors that have some relevance um, to some of the needs you may have that, that are most glaring. Uh, provide accountability to your your fellow uh, founders in that cohort over the over the month and a half. Um, get you live fire 
um, pitch practicing. Uh, we're going to bring in outside investors from outside of Pittsburgh <clears throat> under the understanding um, they'll hear your pitch of your real thing. Um, the the incentive right there is not to provide to write a check yet, but to give you real investor feedback. Okay. Um, and then we want you outside of the, the um, Tuesday night sessions to be talking with actual customers and being held about, accountable by not only the mentors, but the group itself. Cool. So it's definitely homework. Right. <laughs> uh, so, so where can people uh, find out information about this and apply and, 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 and you know, find all the details? Yeah, so startupboost.org. Uh, if they want to get straight to the application and get going, startupboost.org slash apply. Uh, we'll get them to the list of cities that participate in case uh, anyone's listening here. You would assume it would be Pittsburgh. Uh, if they want to read more about the program itself in general, then startupboost.org is where they want to go and, and get mm -hmm. started. And this, this is purely a, a Pittsburgh regional operation going on here? This cohort is, yeah, it's a global uh, initiative. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of spans from Dublin to L.A. Um, this spring cohort, I think there's I think there's seven or eight other cities, New York, Toronto, Dublin. Um, and you know, we're, we're, the hope is that we're, we're taking this global initiative and, 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 and hopefully it meets uh, Pittsburgh where, where the rubber is, you know, hits the road right here. Um, we're going to iterate on that as you would uh, in any, you know, um, nascent initiative. Um, our belief is that exposure to um, new mentors, uh, keeping you accountable, you know, to, throughout that, just, you know, putting your nose to the grindstone for a month and a half on working on this to put it into market, whether you want to get that to, an, to a, a national accelerator to uh, maybe raise some money or a, a totally valuable and, and viable outcome is, hey, maybe just make money and, and, and go hire some people and, mm -hmm. and make a profit. Maybe that's the outcome. And um, it, it gets you to sort of reflect on that, too. It's a it's a volunteer led program. Also, it's worth noting if we didn't already that it you know we don't take any fees or any equity. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great sandbox of playing in that sense. And to echo what Kit said, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's just not for them. Running a company or being an entrepreneur is not for them. It's not uh, a glorious thing to to be done by any means, regardless of whatever movie or article you read it is, um, it has definitely been glorified in the past <coughs> several yeah, years so for sure so you know this is a, at the very least this is a good experience where you don't have to uh basically burn all your bridges at your corporate gig or at your <laughs> campus or whatever the case may be or with your family um <laughs> to uh to find out you know like okay this is this is something i can get into the groove of or not so and in addition to the the the, the ways you can ca contact us online um we're doing citywide outreach Mm -hmm. um, try to do at least one or two every Wednesday on, you know, in, in, uh, libraries, co-working spaces, accelerators, kind of pockets of community. Um, we, we, we really want to, um, hope to encourage underrepresented founders, uh, to join this. Um, mm -hmm. the, the whole, uh, ethos of this is, is, um, we want to remove the excuses for entrepreneurs to start and provide resources and network and context when they do. That's good. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of great ideas and there's definitely a lot of resources out there and, and Pittsburgh is definitely... You know, I mean, it's one of the the, the, the cores of why we started this show was sure. we saw that stuff happening with the Alpha Labs and the companies and before Google and everybody built fancy offices in town. <laughs> so, sure. uh, so it was really cool to see another tool like this uh, as well. It, it, and definitely you call uh, me a tool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I admit it because that's only the third time today. You said <laughs> well, you know, uh, sure. but no, it's been it's been a pleasure. I know I've, I've gotten to um, be around uh, several startup weekends and seeing that. And, and it's cool to see even companies that have literally kind of came from nothing and have become at least like the next step right. of a company, you know, making a go at yeah. it, too. So uh, I can't wait to see who kind of pops up from this. And if any and if any stars kind of pop out from this, make sure to kick them our way so we can talk to them, too. Awesome. So, sure. <laughs> so go check it out. That's again, that is at startupboost.org. And uh, thanks, guys, for joining us and hanging out with us here uh, for this episode of Awesome Cast. Thank you. Hey, thanks, we, thanks, want, we also want to give a shout out to our good friend. Uh, hey, you know, in business, you got to, you know, if you if you don't pay attention to, to history, you're doomed to repeat it. That that that's, that counts for startups. That counts for a lot of things. And our good friend uh, Professor Buzzkill is helping us with history at large over there. Professorbuzzkill.com. Uh, he is thankfully Professor Buzzkill's uh, making learning history entertaining and humorous through his blog and podcast. You can explore it over there at ProfessorBuzzkill.com. Uh, subscribe to his uh, re redone and updated and a lot of fun stuff going over on his YouTube channel as well. And of course, please subscribe to him on your podcast listening device too. Uh, a lot of great stuff. Uh, he has some some 
He has some uh, uh, episodes on the Green Book, which just won a bunch of uh, Oscars, I think, the other night, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he, if you're curious about walls and their effectiveness, because that's a hot topic these days we will not get into on this show, uh, you can go find out more information about that, too. Uh, he had a great one about that uh, just a couple weeks ago that is just breaking download records for him, too. So go check him out. Professor Buzzkill, good friend of the network. Okay, so uh, if you guys are listening, um, a lot of you guys are in our Awesome Cast Facebook group, and we do pay attention to what's going on over there uh, in the news. And I, well, there was some sad news. Um, Reggie Phils and me of Nintendo is apparently retiring. He has been like he, he's been there through the dark times, Chilla. I think for the most part, right? Yes. So I mean, you you've been through that. You've <laughs> my, my my favorite part of this story is who's taking over. Who is taking over? I didn't see. It's uh, his last name is Bowser. Oh, that's <laughs> too on point. Come <laughs> on. Yeah, seriously. No, no, no. Yeah, his last name is Bowser. Um, I think his name came up before because there was an article yeah, like pop ups like a year or two ago. Doug Bowser. Doug Bowser <laughs> to be replaced by marketing man Doug Bowser. Doug Bowser. That's that's way too on point. He can. There's no way this guy is going to be as interesting to see on those. I wonder, horrible did this guy change his name just to work at Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible. Uh, but uh, thank you, Riz. Riz Plays Games for uh, sharing that with us here uh, this week. Um, yeah, it, it, man, I, he's kind of been the face. Now, see, I grew up with Howard Lincoln that was in the comics in Nintendo Power. I, I missed Nintendo. You missed that. You missed Nestor. Nestor Bowling. Yes. <laughs> I was looking at Nestor Bowling on the uh, Virtual Boy. I still want a Virtual Boy, even though I know it's going to give me literal headaches. But you know, it's, it's a part of history, right? So, are you guys are you guys Nintendo uh, fanboys growing up? Are oh, you? Yeah, I was are, late to are, the game, but I uh, I'm a loyalist for sure. Now, are you are you, you know was was Reggie uh, a cheerleader for you in the in the Nintendo years? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Reggie's my guy. So he's at, none, none of the other like leaders of like Sony, Microsoft, Xbox, PlayStation have the personality that he does like that's where they, they kind of win in spades when it's e3 weekend and i'm sad they don't yeah. have like live presentations anymore it's that yeah. pre-recorded stuff which is interesting and quirky and weird and weird <laughs> <laughs> but to me they go beyond because they go beyond e3 they do the continual they do the continued nintendo directs that's which true I think too we don't get those from the other vendors mm -hmm. where I feel like they really fill a gap all year long. You get one versus... giant drop at E3 and that's about it. Yeah. So, but also Nintendo like kind of has to push their own thing because they're so first party <coughs> and, and they're so like first party relationship. Right. So they have to support that a little differently than everybody else. But, and they need the cheerlead. No guys, it'll be okay. No guys, there's completely going to be enough games. No guys. I'm sorry. Zelda's completely coming out next year, guys. You know, things Where's like that. Where's my Metroid? Where is my Metroid? Well, that just got pushed back, too. Yep. Man. They're starting over from scratch. Jeez. That means it's going to be another, like, three years at least. Mm -hmm. they, man. Maybe it'll come to Xbox Live via Switch. <laughs> you never know at this point, right? Or maybe Microsoft will buy them by then. Or I, I still love, what was that, that rumor about Apple? Maybe we'll, would buy Nintendo. I can't have Nintendo's not going to sell. It'd be crazy. Alex Carr is out there in LA, our good friend out there. Uh, he, he's also, he kind of had a quote in the chat room where we're talking. Always assume we're talking about Pittsburgh when we're talking about the startup stuff. It's like, that is true. That is absolutely true. There is a startup boost LA. There is a startup boost yeah. LA. There you go. Our good friend Blake Caldwell is doing it. There you go. Tell him Kit sent you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, he has his awesome thing of the week that he put up on, on the board here this week. Uh, it's the Logitech 92X Pro Stream webcam. I think I got all the words for that. Finally streaming in true HD and Logitech Capture, which lets him do some uh, new things uh, from the otherwise basic live stream at church. So, uh, Chilla, I know you're big on the Logitechs. Is this? Is he also joined the 4K streaming that I'll this, never see through the feed? Yeah, this a is a club 4K. that you're in. It's 1080p at 30 frames a second, or 720 at 60. Frames it looks per like second. the cams that I picked up that 9, 9, 10, 920 series. Yeah, it's in the 920. It's 922. Actually, these are these are if you're getting webcams. This the Logitech like 900 series is like kind of the best thing going for price. I feel from the price working in i wouldn't say low light but working in less a than lower light less than optimal yeah 
they do nice with the lighting and i feel like they do decent with the white balance we did like we had like what were they 30s like night large mm-hmm. tech like 130s or something like that like the the 20 30 dollar ones but we like lit the crap out of that basement in early early iterations of this show and they turned out well so um and then we threw the 920 at a very poorly lit situation for one of my clients <laughs> and it's just like well we got away with it but uh you know they didn't want to spend anymore so I- i'm interested to see because i noticed on the require or on the system compatibility windows windows 7 8 and 10 mac os chrome os which i thought was interesting but also android 5 and higher i'm interested to see how you could use this with hangouts on just a android device are we talking about like maybe those weird android desktops or chrome os or something chrome like os is listed separately which separately. makes me think so i've used but there's like the a micro there's the there's the the giant desktops that run Android that I've seen at Best Buy. Is that the Samsung one that's meant to be portable and like? No, a, this thing was like at, like bigger than these monitors I have on my. Oh, like, I like seen probably a, probably at least the size of this. Uh, yeah, probably like a twenty four inch like this monitor behind me. Um, no, so it, like it 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 had a keyboard and a mouse, and it was definitely like, and this is probably like two years ago, and it was definitely meant to be your desktop oh. at that point, but it's an all in one. Uh, kind of situation so I, it has to be something like that right they, they maybe they have to throw a driver in there or something and have some I, proper usbs i that i don't know and i'd be i'd be interested to see how that works and now i want to grab one of these and i i actually have like a micro usb to usb a so i can plug like a thumb drive into an android device i'm interested mm-hmm. to see what would happen if they plug this in i i'm with the traveling, I'm looking to see what I can get away with with just the iPad Pro. So I need to invest in the, okay, I know I can plug, plug my blue snowball into it. Like, what else can I get away did with? Did you did, remind me before I leave to pass you the article about, I can't remember who it was. Who runs six colors? Do you remember? There was, someone wrote an article all about um, how they how they survived just off their iPad. Yeah. They actually had it plugged into like a, a um, USB based like recorder and switcher and all kinds of stuff. They didn't, I don't think they were doing the the video. They were just doing an audio podcast, but okay. they had it. They had a pretty crazy setup running off just an iPad. I, I I'm still, I'm at the point. I realize, I, I think I've mostly got it. I need a body here to listen in and, and turn the physical knobs here, but I can run most of this studio from an iPad remotely, like over, over the net internet. Like we've, we've done portions of that. And I think I, I've closed that. So in the traveling, I was trying to figure out there's at least one night I'm going to miss podcast night and I'm going to be stuck in Michigan. And I'm trying to figure like, can I just produce the show remotely? And just have somebody here just to be my hands for the, like the soundboard, basically, and you know, setting up cameras and things like that. But uh, we're this close, man. They're this close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, right up here. We're on Broadway. They're on Broadway. That's the original. That's the OG uh, for those guys up there. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a while now. We remember when they were one solely place on Broadway and the name made sense for the most part. But now they're everywhere, including Carnegie PA, the East End, and PNC Park Home, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Go check them out. I know uh, uh, several of you guys have come in town. Check them out and uh, send me pictures when you go to Slice on Broadway at the ballpark. Thank you so much for that. Uh, hit them up. Uh, at sliceonbroadway.com, pgh underscore slice on the Twitter, and let them know the awesome cast sent you, helping feed our fine guests here this week on the show. I know you guys got the you guys got the you guys got are pizza. You, is it your first time with uh, the slice on Broadway? No, I no. The park, yeah, yeah. You you get it over on East End for sure, and I know yeah. you're hanging out over that that side of town. So, well, it was my first adventure, and I thought it was I thought it was quite tasty. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, definitely beats like it's definitely better than the usual ballpark pizza for sure. (laughs) So, all right. Um, I realized there was one, I need to close the loop on something here. Chilla from, from last, last week. What was it? Uh, this person does not exist.com. Um, there was a new one we found. Yeah. Check that out. That was weird. Have you seen this cat does not exist? (laughs) 
dot com. So <laughs> we we had the one, and I think I shared it on the social media for you guys so you could see. Um, so so the idea was they were using uh, NVIDIA GPUs to uh, you know to AI you know try to generate faces or when they fed it you know some source material and it's trying to say okay we generated this picture of a, of a person's face and background and everything. So now they're doing it with cats. Because um, of, of course they are. Because of course they are. Because it's the internet. Okay, this one's okay. Um, the, the the results have gotten weird uh, from what I've seen. And actually, this one's not refreshing. I, yeah, I can't get to the page. Is it broken? This cat does not That's exist. Your screen it's, it's, now. We we took out the page by just oh, talking no. about it. Oh, oh no! Oh no! What's that? Uh, I have. There's an article on there, but oh, it doesn't no. have the. It's not in English. Whatever is going on with it? <laughs> For something details details. All right, we'll figure this out. So I mean, it, it wasn't exactly um, working as well because it's Russian. It, yeah, it's Russian. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, th- th- that's the other thing. Uh, where'd you put it on the show notes, producer Messi? The way bottom of the show notes. I see events. I see. Oh, there it is. Of course, cheeseburger.com has the proper link for this. Um, I couldn't get there from there. I had a lot of issues. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of it. There was a lot of transporter cat syndrome with this thing. And I, if you know, look away if you're easily disturbed. Uh, <laughs> it gets kind of weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cats are a little harder than faces, apparently. Remember, um, I thought they'd be less data points. <laughs> yeah, right? But, I mean, the different kinds of furs and... Um, oh, boy. Yeah. No, it gets weird. It gets weird. We'll, we'll share this. So we don't know what happened to the website itself. They might have taken it down after, you know, it got really disturbing. Um, but... <laughs> do, you, do you remember when they had... We, I think we covered it on here where they had the AI watch, like, thousands of hours of Bob, Bob Ross art painting stuff. And it wrote a script for, like, the happy little trees... No. And then there was another one where they fed the AI over a thousand hours of Olive Garden commercials and they had the AI <laughs> write an Olive Garden commercial. Oh, I they read the script for that it at was one hysterical. point. hysterical. Yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, what they need to do is get a get an AI to listen to like thousands of hours of podcasts oh, and yeah. create oh, yeah. just a random audio See, podcast they're all they're almost at that point because th- this i didn't know because they were talking about a lot of these ai things on some of the podcasts uh this week and and apparently like um sports and financial segments of newspapers are already using ai to write the articles oh yeah have you heard you've heard about this oh, yeah, well i know sure. sports teams are using it for their drafts aren't they because they're taking in their because when you when you draft a player Obviously, you're looking at their stats, but you also want to under, understand how they would mesh in with your team. Mm. So if they can grab personality trait information along with your team's strengths and weaknesses, and they can look at the potential pick to figure out what their personality and where their strengths and weaknesses are and how they can better complement your team. So it's like the they're new, using it's, it's, it. It's like the new money ball. I've never seen it's I mean, the second person let, that's talked about this movie. Let's I've be honest. At this point, if the Browns could draft a deep fake, they would. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, I, geez. Hope it helps somebody out. All right. But yeah, but so then, I mean, but I don't see every, why, why you wouldn't use that type of technology. But then everybody's going to be using this, yeah. right? But everybody's money balling it right now. But the, but I guess the in that case, by the way, go the see best, your homework is to go see Moneyball. Go, go see Moneyball. Yeah, yeah. But read the book. The best so. draft pick for you might not be the best draft draft pick for me, so we might not be going after the same play. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because it factors in the rest of your team and yeah. fills in the gaps. Yeah. Interesting. Um, if it will help me with my fantasy league when I used to do fantasy leagues. Um, <laughs> so, Chilla, do you want to talk about foldable things or hollow lens? We can talk about foldable things because I, I think you're going to be. Which you, one's more expensive? Yeah, well, yeah that's <laughs> your first thing. Uh, <laughs> which one can we afford the least? Yeah. Are you, are you guys excited about? Are you guys Android users? I feel like you're Android guys, right? I'm Android. You're Android. I'm, okay. I converted back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you're you're, you're back and forth. Oh, yeah. So are you excited for a for a foldable phone and the and the prospects of that? 
that I, runs eighteen hundred and okay. Price aside, yeah. Yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Price yeah, yeah, aside, yeah. as a concept, yeah. <laughs> this idea yeah. of affordable Moore, phone. Uh, Moore's law is understood. Everybody here, we don't need to worry about. It. Yeah, yeah it's, it'll be the cool. it'll be the free phone and cricket in five years. Don't I worry. I saw about the stuff it. that they were showing off at uh, Mobile World Congress, but I guess today they came out with like a new iteration yeah, because then, of the backlash. It was like really, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. I know there was another. I can't remember who it was. So Somebody there, made... There's a Samsung one, which was, you know, that was the big that's one. The big and I one, think it's yeah. technically the second one because there's one at CES from some company nobody's heard of. Uh, Huawei, I believe, just, just announced one. LG might have put one out as well. I didn't see well. the LG one. I saw but, the Huawei one. But like the, I think the Huawei one is even more expensive than the Samsung one. Yes, but it's interesting because it like has this weird lip on the one side that it, it kind of <laughs> yeah. doesn't fold evenly when it folds in. I'll, I'll see if I can find that one too. Oh yeah, I think I, I think I saw a picture of that. But like like even the Samsung one has like five cameras on it. It's it seems well you do, but but think about it if you're if you're doing a like a hangout and you open up the device, you need to be able to flip a camera to the screen side that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. so we definitely need a camera on each side which now you kind of have four kind so, of have so four it's kind of the, the if you just have five like just in case cameras at this yes. point right depending on how many how how you use this and thing. Then i'm sure you want the dual cameras on the at least dual or triple cameras because their s10 has triple cameras on the back mm -hmm. for the um telephoto regular and wide angle so the idea is, you know, you, you fold it over. It kind of has a mini display, on, which, you know, kind of reminds me of just like the display that when you close your when you lock your phone. When I guess it's a full Android display. It's a full Android display. It, but so you have a foldable display on the inside, like a book. And then you also have like a regular 4.6 inch, it's saying here. Uh, display on the front that you can just do regular phone things. The, the interesting thing I thought, and they they called it instantaneous. Yeah. But they mm -hmm. obviously it isn't by by you can see the video right here. The person opening. So whatever you're doing on the front of the device when you open it, go figure. They called it continuity. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that term's been coming up a lot. It was it was Samsung that used it before, it or Apple. Apple used it. That's right. Yeah. Um, when you open it up, it takes you right to wherever you were on the front screen. So Google Maps, um, I'm looking at a map, right? And I open up the device. Now I get a either much more wider view of where I'm going on Google Maps with more roads and more information, or I can zoom it that much bigger. Um, that's where I could see the value. The interesting thing that they also announced was the partnership with Adobe and correct me because I'm probably going to get this wrong. What's their mobile video editing? Uh, the Adobe Rush? Premiere Rush. Yes. yes. By the way, side note that the, just since we mentioned it, uh, if you start a project in Rush, they will set and don't finish it. They will send you an email asking why you didn't finish the project. <laughs> and I think they offered me a $20 Amazon gift card to do it. So it's, it's AI. It, it's <laughs> it's it's something, man. Uh, but uh, yeah. So so anyway. So so they have a partnership. There's going to be like well, a special fold out edition for this phone. No, so Rush. they made a partnership with Adobe for Adobe Rush, and they've optimized Rush for their new line of devices, which I'm pretty sure includes the Fold. And I would guess that the Fold's going to work with the deck stock. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, so now I have this device with a small 4.6 inch screen. I open it up, I can use a keyboard and mouse with that folded out interface, which is tablet size. Oh, by the way, I can dock it into this thing that's into a full size keyboard, mouse, and monitor. And it becomes your tablet. And if you can, have you watched Westworld? I guess I've watched Westworld. So like the, the, the pocket type computers that they, like that's where I think they want to go with this, where... You have this pocket-sized device. You can use it in its folded state. You can open it up for more information or for a better user experience, and mm -hmm. then you can go also use it almost like a computer. It's a nice idea, it feels, right? Right, Kit? You're, you're, you're kind of... Yeah, it's, um, it, I mean, the, the good news is I think it, it we can see the promise of it, but it's V1. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still, you know, it's like you're going to see a couple of these, and they'll go the way of the... Yeah, the, some something else will come behind this, yeah. and I see. I remember. I I, I wonder because I I remember like the first days of Pot Camp Pittsburgh, and like there was the one person, probably I Justine, that had the iPhone, right? Or and, Brogan. 
or Brogan. They're probably both, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, there was the, you know, little bit of like, oh, hey, that's the thing. Like, is this the, because now it's like everybody has a slab of glass that does all the same stuff. Um, is this the thing that I'm going to go to some kind of, you know, startup weekend or, or tech conference and be like, oh, they got the foldable, right? That's the, that's the new Apple logo is, is, is that weird new form factor technology you're going to see around there. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely, <laughs> they called it, um, oh, what's the term they used? They, 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 they called it a, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely, they're saying this is a high end. This is for the elite it's, people it's to get it's because it is, too, it's, it's a l- luxury, luxury device. device. Right. Um, so which, yeah, but also it's the first adapter, you know, first adopter people that buy Google glass because all I can think is you drop that and simultaneously shatter three <laughs> screens. Now you're thinking my thing. Like, how do I how do I get a case for that thing? Because right. I need a case for that thing. Yeah. And then how big is that going to be? And then it doesn't even fit in my pants pocket anymore, right? Because this thing's thick, isn't it? I mean, it's huge. It, it is be. thick and huge. But and it's perfect if you're in the Wild West in the future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can land a, a NASA spaceship from this thing. Jeez. is it is it powerful is it like does it have the higher end stuff or is it basically just it's higher end i don't think it's it, like it's eons and light years beyond it's not much seen. more than like an, an s10 uh which is the can we say typical phone yeah. at this point which is still like a thousand dollars don't forget <laughs> samsung much like apple custom makes their silicon they're using like okay. custom still? snapdragon processor so they do but still based some, on snapdragon yeah apple is apple based on arm their arm it's their arm a a whatever number yeah yeah but they they, they build it but out it's, from there it's it's a modification of, of arm hmm. <laughs> dave ponder of the tiny shutter podcast saying a 9.2 minute battery life uh <laughs> this thing has two batteries too so it's gonna need them it's yeah it's gonna need them to power all that screen so oh boy how many years before you think like Regular schmoes like us can walk around with a foldable screen. Well, I think that it'll be two years before it's approachable, and I think it, where it's functional, you'd want to buy it. Yeah, where you start seeing the advantage of it, right? I mean, look, look how long it took to get from pocket PC <laughs> to BlackBerry right? Mm-hmm. to iPhone and Android. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was a good 10 yeah. years. Now back to Moore's law. I mean, they can continue to, to cut that in half. I I I totally agree. Till the point where it's it's usable and then approachable for the normal customer is going. I think we got we got at least two to three years. I mean, we've been conditioned on the pricing mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. It's just the functionality and mm-hmm. things like that. Well, to your point, the slab of glass that everybody has it does the same thing. I mean, mm-hmm. at two thousand dollars, at that point, I might be looking at a virtual assistant. An actual human being <laughs> who does work for me that might be cheaper, and you know, then I don't have to carry around a, a folding iPad in my uh, in my pocket. I would think that over. Sure. Uh, we have a few comments from the from the chat room. Uh, the Alex Alex is out there saying that uh, the great thing about Samsung's foldable phone is that Apple will have it perfected by in five years for about five grand. That seems about right. And where do you put the Apple logo? I guess on two sides. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, that's off brand. That's yeah. off brand. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't think Steve would have done a affordable phone. That's an existential. That's a real problem. That's a design. Well, problem. So right here's there. the thing, though. If mm-hmm. you. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh, he dropped. <laughs> if you if you look back at the Apple patents, mm-hmm. I want to say back seven years, mm-hmm. there are patents for a foldable phone <laughs> that were as recently updated as as soon as mid last year <laughs> alex is also saying i'd rather pay two thousand for a foldable phone than 350 for a mini phone to go with my actual phone <laughs> you know what let's just uh, we'll just get two iphones and we'll like tape them both together and you know if there's just like a sync function and then we're good to go we'll just put a little hinge in there um uh what's the name of the marvel tv show that's on the Ag- agents of shield agents of shield so the guy on there in season one, that was one of the big tech items that that crew carried. Fitz had, it was like a, it was, it was like a tablet, but it actually, it was like a trifold, almost like a trifold wallet where it folded out into three screens and he had oh, yeah. three different things Is that the, he was controlling the drones with the them dr- or something? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, 
we, we've we've seen it on Agents of Shield. It can happen. <laughs> so, I still I still like the what Kingsman where they explain like yeah we don't have any high tech equipment we just buy iPhones because we basically ha- there's no there's nothing better than this <laughs> yeah. you know um uh, we, okay we get to touch on one more thing before we head out of here Hololens two uh, was announced at uh, this was at Mobile World Congress I believe. Um, it is officially launching later this year for $3,500. And as opposed to the first one where we saw all these cool games and Minecraft and that kind of stuff and educational things, this one is being targeted directly at uh, more enterprise corporations. I understand there's a payment plan. So if you want to take like two or three years at $175 a month to uh, <laughs> to, to get your HoloLens, um, I actually met somebody who like worked with HoloLens in the wild Uh randomly a couple months ago which was it, it, how many years did it come out five years ago right around there something like that and, and remember like somebody was saying hey the hollow ones was at like e3 or something and then there was nothing i was like yeah that it wasn't it was how an sdk content? though yeah it was an SDK. and how much content even if you had the hollow ones too how much pre-built content is out there versus oh. they expect these manufacturers to build. They're still putting it out there trying to figure out what to do with it for the, the most the, part, right? The one thing that I thought was interesting was they also announced last week, Microsoft announced uh, Assist. For, I think it's for Android and they're going to have a, a somewhat similar Apple application where I can hold up my phone. It, it reminds me of the old days of Google Glass. So I can hold up my phone and look at something like the engine in my car Mm -hmm. and work with someone on the other side that has a hollow lens Mm -hmm. and potentially other information around them where they can see what I'm seeing being looking, looking up additional information and then kind of drawing in the air at what they're seeing. That's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And then I can see through like an AR type view like a drawing of an engine. Hey, pull this. Plug, so, so basically this, they, this, this is a way for somebody to you go, know, Hey, you're only a 41 hollow lens. If you're going down this road, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is a way for somebody else to kind of join in and. But think of, think if you're experience. like the person that repairs the coffee machines and all the Starbucks's, right. Yeah. And you have a bunch of people that aren't as experienced. You could have that one person with the hollow lens back in the mothership. And then every person that needs help out trying to repair the coffee makers. Mm-hmm. Think of that use case. I mean, to me, it, it it offers itself to you really, you don't need everyone to have the hollow lens. You need that one person that can then communicate with a bunch of people on phones. It sounds like everyone's grandparents around. ought to just buy their grandson one of these. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this goes for, back for tech to your, support. To tech support <laughs> yeah. question. Yeah. I can't see what you're seeing because I can't tell you how many times I tell someone, you're going to have to get on FaceTime or in a Google Hangout sure. and point your camera <laughs> yeah. at whatever you're yeah. seeing on your screen. Uh, Dave Pond is calling this uh, Super WebEx. Super yeah. WebEx. Yeah. WebEx AR. WebEx AR. <laughs> Jeez. What was the old, was it See My PC? Was the old Go to My PC? Go to My, Go to my PC? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's basically just uh, that on steroids. Yeah. yeah. Go to yeah. My PC, but go to my living room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, and employees we'll... love that, of course. They didn't go crazy <laughs> with, with uh, the controversy and the conspiracy of that. My mouse moved. It must be someone in my in my computer. Doing Someone's things. in there. Yeah, <laughs> the hackers. Uh, well, again, you know, it's. It, I mean, Google Glass has gone gone down this route with with the SDKs and 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 you know, going straight to enterprise and, and they're like factory. They were looking yeah. at like factory line workers and things yeah. of that nature. Factory line workers, you know, repairs, a uh, medical field. This looks to be going a lot of the same ways. I don't know, except for this one uh, lady who's apparently set designing um, in a fancy theater. Uh, with her hands so i i don't know i guess i guess that fits in there too but that was one of the early demos wasn't it was like being being a a uh interior designer and you're like throwing like the furniture and everything like you know everywhere around the place so you can see it in place you know like property brothers where all the f- the furniture just plops down in the empty room yeah exactly so but the this here's is where here's where i still I wish, and I, I did. I have not yet seen a video that shows you what the person's actually seeing. Mm-hmm. You always have the video with the person wearing the hollow lens, and this really amazing <laughs> everything going on around them. You don't actually get to see what they're seeing. Yeah, 
what interested me about this device is they've doubled the size of the viewable space inside the display. Hmm. In, in On the first gen, they, they referred to it as a mailbox slot. So like out of everything you see, you get this mailbox slot in the center and that's the only paintable and still, screen area. Yeah. And you still widely see, like, it's like you're wearing glasses, you see everything around you. It just like everything, it, it you know, it's kind of like that little block on Google Glass. Yeah. It only appears in that little block in your vision, you know, so if you were moving around in a 3D space in there, it's only still in that little block mm. screen, right? But now they've doubled that. But now they've doubled that, doubled that. vertically. So, Yes, but, it, so, but I mean, so if, it's if like you went from a letterbox slot. in the center of your view and doubled it, to me, that is a much bigger mm -hmm. area. I, I Again, I, I think we need to see a video from the point of view of the person wearing the goggles to figure out I, what this is. I don't, I feel like it's not like either they don't want to convey it or it's hard to convey. Like we still got, like, it Google, can't be that hard to convey. Google Glass <laughs> had an, a great I can take a visual. screenshot from my watch. <laughs> They can give me a screenshot of what the person is saying. It does run Windows 10. And that's fine. Like, no, no, no. I'm just saying it has that functionality because mm -hmm. it should because it runs Windows 10, right? Um, Fire up the snipping tool and let's, let's get a picture. <laughs> Where's Clippy when you need Where it? Where is Clippy when you need it, right? So <laughs> we just got a message from producer Missy if you're voguing on this show. <laughs> Trying to... <laughs> <laughs> describe your mail slot there uh anyways hey let's give it a shout out uh to our friend alexander cars alexcars.media he's in the chat room every week and uh i want to give a shout we, we've been plugging there's been people looking for designers we've been plugging them on everything uh, uh, out there on twitter at least in the wrestling world uh but go check them out alexcars.media k-a-h I forgot how to spell his name real quick. K A H R S. There it is. Dot media. Alex Cars. Dot media. Putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital products. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Go check out Alex Cars. Dot media to get started. He's done a lot of cool projects with us. He's out there on the left coast and uh, still doing a lot of work here in Pittsburgh with us somehow. Uh, a lot of the great t-shirt designs, uh, web designs. Uh, he's done some DVD covers for us, and uh, t-shirt designs featured on several uh, uh, designs over at What a Maneuver, and I believe uh, ProWrestlingTees.com as well. Go check him out if you need some design work done. Uh, really good work, and we've had a lot of fun working with him. So uh, with that uh, coming up, please uh, join us here Tuesday morning. Uh, we just had an announcement for, I'm sorry, we have a comment here. Uh, Potter from Tiny Shutter. OMG, we need Clippy, but voiced by Poppy. <laughs> Ooh, I'm Clippy. Have you guys seen Poppy? Yeah. We'll just, we'll just let you guys yeah. ruin your <laughs> evenings, uh, looking up Poppy on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> that's for the other podcast. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, a shout out, uh, yeah, our friends at Pittsburgh Current will be in here on Thursday morning. And uh, with guest uh, Patrick Jordan, uh, who is the uh, uh, he's uh, breaking down the Bare Bones Productions on the newest show. Sorry, I got this graphic two hours ago, so I'm still reading it <laughs> over on uh, the Legend of Georgia McBride. Uh, Which is here a great show. That's a good show. Patrick does a great job. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, it'll be good to uh, talk with him here on Thursday morning, 10 a.m. If you want to join us on the Pittsburgh Current uh, stream there. Uh, and keep an eye out for while everything else going on uh, around the Sorgatron Media Network. A lot of great podcasts. Thrifty has a new uh, podcast, uh, <laughs> interestingly titled "We Love the City Paper." Uh, <laughs> so a lot of fun with those. And we had Girl Scouts in here for um, the broadcast that should be uh, going out in a few weeks, um, talking about some cool things that the, the Girl Scouts uh, program is doing in Western PA, and uh, a couple of girls that have done some really cool programs. So. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. Uh, once again, where can they find out about Startup Boost? Startupboost.org. You can go straight to the application if you like, startupboost.org slash apply. Or locally, startupboost.org slash Pittsburgh. Awesome. You guys are involved in a lot of stuff. Anything else you want to plug while you're here? we got startup uh, drinks coming up on March 27th at Kingfly Spirits. If you are in the startup arena or want to meet people that are or funding it or building them, uh, just come down. It's a happy hour. Uh, you can find out more about on, on uh, the Facebooks or just on Google Startup Drinks Pittsburgh. Awesome. I think I just saw that in my feed uh, just earlier today. So, awesome. Thanks. And where can Thanks people sure. find you guys? At Kit Mueller, T-I-T-M-U-E-L-L-E-R. And at 
Mitch Turk, M I T C H T U R C K, everywhere at symbols work. Right. <laughs> and John Chichilla, he is at Chilla on the Twitter, chillatech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. There you go. You can hit him and ask him um, how to get your Surface product replaced. Yeah, if you need help getting your Surface replaced, I can't do it myself, but I can walk you through the process. He can, he can tell you. He can tell you the dead ends. Yes. And and how you can't contact actually contact Ross Park Mall Microsoft Store somehow. So, uh, go check out everything. And, and thank you, everybody, uh, producer Missy, for keeping me in line and in time for this show, so we can get at least relatively an hour. Uh, unlike that other show that goes pretty crazy. Uh, so, and uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room, including. <laughs> show title items this cat does not exist i like that uh thank you everybody in the chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com